Uh, the market's closing in positive territory, but below that all-time high that was hit in May 2008. That said, we did hit a new record intraday high. What are you making of all the gains coming through in the markets, and do you think that it's sustainable? Well, I think first of all, the, the, the market was a day of two halves. The market opened very strongly. It was up at, up about 300 points, as you said, in, uh, in all time, well, an intraday all-time high. Um, but I think really the, the euro dollar started to concern the market and also the, the, the credit spreads, which, which basically price in the chance of a sovereign default in Europe. They all blew out, Portugal, Spain, the whole, the whole range, Greece, of the, Greece they, all, they all blew out. And really, I think that started to weigh on the market. So you saw the market come back. It really wasn't up much by the time I'd left the market to come yeah. to come to to the camera but i think what we've got to see here is first of all a little bit of consolidation you've had big moves in the big stocks like anglo-american billet and sassel over the last week and i think before we can expect the market to push higher i think you're going to see the anglos and the billies con try and consolidate these levels before it try and take another leg up well it's quite interesting because when you look at the top 40 performance of some of these companies it's pretty much a mixed bag we had lonman at the top of the top 40 up 3.6 percent naspas at the bottom we had implats down 1.7 percent uh, so we are starting to see a bit of mixed performance coming through whether we look at the resource space or even the industrial industrial space as well. Your view on that and it seems that markets are trying to find some form of direction. We've seen heavy selling on the construction and retail front. Do you think that is going to prompt some buying into these companies? Well, I think first of all, let's have a look at the resources. I certainly wouldn't be selling out of my resources. I think the resource stocks still have some way to go and they could drive the market through, through breaking all the records. I think uh, Anglos and Billiton still have some way to go as well as Sassel. If you have a look at the construction sector, Group 5 came out today with, with poor results, headline earnings down 21%. Um, not a great lot of opportunity in that sector. On the back of Murray's results last week, um, Group 5 had already been hit, so a lot of the hit had been taken. Um, and yeah, you know, there's, there's cow train coming to an end, there's no more World Cup infrastructure spend. So I think for, for construction stocks, the road is tough uh, in the near to midterm. If you have a look at the retailing stocks, they're quite interesting. Um, towards the end of last year, we, we all thought that they were overheated. Uh, they continue to rally, but they have come off about 15 to 20%, depending on which stock you look at. Um, um, so I think at some point you've got to start looking at a Mr. Price for maybe a 5 or 10% rally if you are jobbing the markets. I certainly wouldn't be shorting the, re the retailers here because I think they have taken quite a knock in a short, in a short space of time. And for me, the industrial stocks like the, the NASPERS, the MTNs look pretty full at these levels. Um, that's not to say I'd be selling out of my NASPERS because I do believe it will be a 500 Rand share. But I think the industrial stocks are full. So um, it's a bit of a mixed bag and it's, it just depends which foreigners are selling what, what stocks. It's very tough to read into anything if Impala's down or Kumba's up. It's very tough to read at the moment. Mm. Well, I mean, you're talking about uh, flows as well. What about flows into emerging markets? We had some interesting numbers coming through out of China. Imports up quite strongly and the likes of exports still looking relatively robust. We're still talking about the inflation environment coming through in China. We see commodity prices doing extremely well despite a stronger U.S. dollar, particularly against the euro as well. How do you see that affecting uh, the markets in South Africa and this on the backdrop of also a weaker local currency? Most certainly. Okay, well, let's have a look at China. First of all, China continues to, to steam ahead. I don't see monetary policy tightening in China as a bad thing. I think it's good to try and cool down that economy. I think the numbers we saw out from China were good today, and that resulted in the Australian market going up quite strongly, quite a big move for the Aussie market. Um, and hence the commodity stocks, because the Aussie market is quite a commodity-heavy index. So I, I think China is still good. I think it, the, the commodity prices will still be strong. But I do think there are going to be speed bumps, and I think the markets are high, and I think the euro dollar could be the, the, the thing that's going to be a little bit of a storm on the markets and, and perhaps, perhaps put a spanner in the works. I think if you see this, the, these euro debt crisis come back to the fore, I think you think could see the market come off from these high levels, to be mm. honest with you. Let's quickly touch on the retail sector. You mentioned that a little earlier. We had Spa Group out with a trading update saying turnover is up 9.5%. We have seen massive losses coming through for these retailers on uh, the share price front on the JSE. They have been underperforming relative to the rest of the market. That said, you alluded to it earlier. We've seen fantastic runs from these companies. What about food retailers like the likes of Spa and Pick and Pay and Checkers in the light of perhaps higher food inflation down the line? as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you have a look at the retailers, for me, the pick of the bunch would be Woolworths. 
if you have a look, I think Woolworths was trading about 28 Rand in December. I think it's trading mid 23 Rands, 23 Rand 50 at the moment. For me, that's a solid business. That would be the pick of the of the food retailers, although it's not a true food re retailer. It's certainly a big part of it. I think that would be the one I'd be looking at. Um, if you have a look at in the clothing sector, I'd certainly, or just the general retail, I'd have a look at Mr. Price. Um, I saw an upgrade on Mr. Price looking at about 65 Rand today. But you know, the, that's one thing. These retailing stocks have doubled in a year, and they're certainly they're not going to go back to straight up to their to their December highs in one straight line. I think it's going to be a rocky road for them. But I certainly think they might be worth a little nibble at these levels.